Hi, welcome back. This is FSX404. Today I'm going to show you something I usually do in Flight Simulator when I'm not just flying for fun. It's going to be a full Localizer 2.5 approach into Hawthorne, KHHR. It will be done in full IFR IMC weather conditions and with an airplane vacuum failure. A vacuum failure in a Cessna 182, the plane I'll be using today, means that I'll be two instruments short. When a vacuum failure occurs, the attitude indicator and the heading indicator will not work. So since I'll be missing two of those instruments, I'll use other instruments to compensate for the loss. Because the attitude indicator shows me the airplane pitch and bank, a vacuum failure in IFR IMC conditions is considered a major emergency. That means a squawk of 7700 is recommended and I'll be given priority over any other airplane. In the meantime, I still have to get the airplane on the ground as soon as possible. So getting back to flying the airplane, since I don't have an attitude indicator anymore, I will use the turn coordinator and the compass to show me my approximate bank and I will use the VSI altitude indicator and the airspeed indicator to show me my approximate pitch. And since the heading indicator is not working, I will have to use the compass for my heading. Using a compass for your headings is a little bit harder than using the heading indicator just because the compass has a lag or a lead depending on which side you're turning. But as long as I keep that in mind, I'll be okay. Now to the flight I will do today. When flying IFR, we always have our departure procedure, in route procedure, and the approach procedure. I'll do a typical Hawthorne departure procedure, which is turning to a heading of 210 upon takeoff, then intercepting a 170 radial from the LAX VOR to an intercept point called Limbo. Limbo is located at a point where 170 radial from the LAX VOR intercepts a radial of 251 from the Seal Beach VOR. Upon reaching Limbo, I can proceed to my filed en route flight plan. My en route today will be from Hawthorne to Hawthorne. Pretty easy. Then, upon reaching my initial approach fix, I'll fly a published approach back to Hawthorne. The approach I will do today into Hawthorne will be the Localizer 2.5 approach. Let me talk a little bit about the Localizer approach. A full Localizer 2.5 approach into Hawthorne starts at the Seal Beach VOR. The initial approach fix, IAF. Then from the Seal Beach VOR, I'll fly a 340 radial until I intercept the Localizer 2.5 into Hawthorne. At this point, which is called Wells, I will be at 2,500 feet. From Wells, I will fly the Localizer 2.5 at a heading of 253. One thing to remember about localizers is that the localizer is about four times as accurate as a VOR. So it will get you there exactly. As we follow the localizer back into Hawthorne, there are two more intercept points that we have to overfly. The first one is Hashi. Hashi is located on a radial of 308 from the Seal Beach VOR when I'm on the localizer 25 approach into Hawthorne. And the next point is Demon, which is located in a 293 radial from the Seal Beach VOR while on the localizer 25 approach into Hawthorne. The way I'm going to know I'm over these points is basic triangulation. Since the localizer 25 approach into Hawthorne does not have a glide slope, I'll have to do what we call a step down approach. A step descent does not mean that we do one smooth, constant 350 foot per minute descent onto the runway. The way a step descent approach is done is that we'll descend to a certain altitude, we'll hold that altitude until the next point, and we'll descend again to another altitude and hold that altitude until the third point. Then we'll descend to our final MDA, minimum decision altitude, which we cannot go under. If we look at it from the side, it looks just like steps. Now I said earlier that at the point wells, I will be at 2,500 feet and I will immediately descend to 1,500 feet. I will stay at 1,500 feet until I reach Hashi. Upon reaching Hashi, I can descend down to 660 feet. I will stay at 660 feet until I reach the last point, Demon. After the intercept point Demon, I can descend down to 600 feet, but no lower. There is one more thing of notice on the approach chart, and that is that Hashi is also the final approach fix. What that means is that if we look in the lower left corner of the approach plate, we'll find a couple of squares that says knots, minutes, and seconds. 
Now, in a Cessna 182, my ground approach speed will be approximately 90 knots. So if you look at 90 knots over the knots, and you look below, you're gonna see something 408. That means I got four minutes and eight seconds at a speed of 90 knots. This is ground speed before I have to do a missed approach. After Hashi, I will start a timer. If after four minutes and eight seconds at 600 feet, if I do not see the airport or the airport runway lights, I will have to do a missed approach. Now let's get back to the flight of today one more time. I also said I was going to give myself a vacuum failure. Once this failure happens, my main concern will be to get back to Hawthorne Airport. If the failure happens after the limbo, then I will simply continue my planned flight, flying partial panel. If the failure happens before limbo, I will immediately turn to the sealed beach VOR so I can land as soon as possible. Either way, I will fly a full localizer 2-5 approach into Hawthorne. Okay, there's one more thing I have to mention, and that is that when anybody's flying partial panel, the flight path will not be straight lines. It's very hard to keep the airplane flying straight. It's going to look more like a long curved SSSSS road than it is going to look like a straight line. But the main thing is to get back to the airport and land safely. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do inside the airplane is that we're going to set up our nav frequencies. We're going to have the LAX VOR in there in nav 1, we're going to have the Seal Beach VOR in nav 2. We're also going to have a couple of backup frequencies like the Seal Beach VOR and especially the Hawthorne localizer in case I have to come back real quick. I'm going to give myself a random squawk code just because it feels more like flying an actual IFR. Once the nav equipment is all set up, uh, I'm ready for takeoff. I can taxi onto the runway. And for a Cessna 182, I'm going to lower the flaps 10 degrees for takeoff. As I line up with the runway, I'm going to add full power. Check out the instruments, they're all in green. Okay, keep rolling down the center line. At around 55, 60 knots, I will pitch the airplane up. I will put my cowling on the horizon. And for the initial climb, I will keep my cowling on that horizon. At 400 feet AGL, I'm going to turn to a heading of 210 to intercept a radial of 170 from the LAX VOR as per my planned departure route to Limbo. Once we're up here, we're going to identify the frequencies we put in to make sure. Okay, NAV1 identified as a LAX VOR. Let's identify NAV2. Let's put the flaps up. That's a little late, but that's okay. Okay, NAV2 identified as the Seal Beach VOR. So once I'm above 1,000 feet above ground, I can reduce the manifold power to 23 inches of mercury and set the prop RPM for about 2400 RPMs for a climb. This is a standard climb and I'm going to keep about 85 to 90 knots for the rest of the climb. 